Well, we're back. I'm Ralph Cianciarulo. And I'm Vicki Cianciarulo. And we want to thank you again for last year's success on The Archer's Choice. You know, without you viewers and our sponsors, none of this would be possible. This year, we have another whole season to go through and lots and lots of exciting footage. I mean, we've got new footage, new experiences, new adventures, new ups and downs, and well, same old wife. Anyways, we're going to get right into the hunting. We're going to keep him from talking as much this year, and let's go hunting. Approximately 180 miles northwest of Churchill, Manitoba, the polar bear capital of the world, North Seal River Lodge, home of Canadian subarctic hunting with Ken Gangler, is set up on this remote fringe of woodlands and tundra, giving us a chance to hunt bears that may have never seen a human. What can we say? The main lodge is awesome. And everything in between, from their own landing strip in the middle of the bush to the entire little village that they've carved out to meet all the needs of their ever-growing client base. You must see it to believe it. This is home of caribou, moose, wolf, and a lot of wild and crazy bears, blondes, chocolate, cinnamons, blacks, chocolate with cinnamon, and every color you could ever hope for. Most of these bears up here have never even seen a human, let alone someone in real tree camo with white bows in their hands. This is the first night up here with Canadian Subarctic Adventures, Ken Gangler's unbelievable Canadian Wilderness Bear Camp. This bear came in less than an hour from when we got in the stand. Dean dropped us off. It was totally by porter, by, by boat. We are not 10 yards off the, off the lake here. This bear came in and he's been in all night. He literally fell asleep at the bait. And I'll tell you what, I can't, I never thought popcorn would work on bears. Was I wrong? What was so cool this evening, we had a wolf come through. And we actually captured it on camera. A beautiful white wolf. But I mean, just 30, 33 yards out and just, wow. We'll be right back with more of The Archer's Choice. We're in one of the most remote areas of, of North America, northern Manitoba, and our area extends all the way up to the edge of the tree line. Uh, this is 240 miles from the closest road. I have an area that's 7,200 square miles. What we do within that area is we're in our trophy management system. We run six different camps with each area drawing about 100 to 200 square miles each. I only put four to six hunters per year through each area, and that's to ensure that all of my hunters get a chance at a big trophy bear. We've got a vast 7,200 square mile area up in northern Manitoba, which has never been hunted before until we opened it. And we offer hunting for big trophy bears, colored bears, uh, central barren ground caribou, and big moose. Um, we're on our trophy management system, and I don't, we have opportunities I just don't think you're going to see anywhere else. Now let's check out what Stan has to say about taking care of your bear hides. Stan, you guys are doing something different here with your blackbirds than we've seen in other bear camps. What are you doing? Well, okay, once the bear is taken, it's really important that we get it cooled down. And uh, the best thing to do that we find that works really well to keep the hair from slipping and everything is to lay the bear out flat and we kind of fold it in half and that way We'll cool it probably for about 12 hours that way. That way it gets to cool completely through the whole hide and the head. And then what we'll do is we'll roll it up and uh, then we'll freeze it completely after that. This is a great tip. One of the things that you guys are doing up here, you guys are going that extra mile to make sure that the hides, no matter where you're, no matter what animals, I'm sure you guys are hunting, you guys are taking care of the hides and making sure that everything's going smooth and they don't get spoiled at all. Exactly, and, and we believe that when the hunter gets home, he wants a quality rug or whatever. Right. And, and he spent the money to come on a hunt mm -hmm. and he wants to go home with his trophy and his trophy's well care, taken yeah. care of up here at Canadian Subarctic Hunting. You betcha. Great, thank you. That was one heck of an experience. I mean, to, to see that, I mean, that's what hunting's all about. To witness stuff like that, in person is just You better awesome. believe it. Now, should we get back to the hunt? Yeah, let's go. Okay.
here the boats are coming. I just shot a nice brown bear. Right here. He spun around, ran, and I heard him fighting branches. Walk, running that way. Listen. The reason we didn't track this thing with the camera is we left Vicky up in a stand because total havoc occurred. He ran about maybe 60 yards or less. The problem is, is a big, another bear, a big black, came in and took him, was dragging him through the timber. When we were on the blood trail, we all of a sudden, this, this bear started coming, going nuts. He wouldn't leave my bear and all he was doing was shaking it and everything. I'm telling you what, Ken Ganglers, Canadian Subarctic Adventures is truly an adventure because these bears are just, I, I can't believe what these bears, I mean. <laughs> if, if there's anything I've learned being up here in Manitoba with Canadian <laughs> Subarctic Adventures and hunting is, your bears are nuts. <laughs> I mean, they're crazy. No, they're not scared. What about that, huh? Was that an exciting that was hunter? What? Beautiful, beautiful Thank you. chocolate bear. Thank you. You know when when that blonde jumped up on your stand, you oh, know, I was scared tar out of me. Well, I was thinking about pushing. Just yeah, so thanks. You know, insurance. Thanks. Well, let me tell you, when you went to go do the recovery on, on your bear, all of our travels, I have never been in a situation like that. My bear went down fast, and the next thing we know is another. It, had, it was a big old black boar that just. And, and I have to tell you, I went to the boat. I didn't even Chicken. want to go. <laughs> you better believe it. Those bears are insane up there. These bears now, are nuts. They're now, crazy. They're wild. And I'm telling you what, they get your heart flowing like. Yeah, but now let's check out Spence. He's on another active bait and let's see what he's got going on. Whew. not waste any more time let's get back with Spence because he's just about getting ready to draw job of guiding. <laughs> You're the man. Boy, this is a beautiful blonde, brown blonde. I was just so excited when I saw this bear. Luckily, it stayed around us for about 10 minutes eating. Got a chance to calm down. Made a real good shot. Ran about 30 yards, did a backflip, three groans, and it was all over. We dragged him out, just brought him out here, and the sun's right. We're going to take a couple of still photos in a few minutes, and I uh, just want to show you this beauty, which and very soon I hope will be adoring the floor of my house. Great bear, love it. Beautiful trophy, Spence, and you know what? Yeah, beautiful I Beautiful mean, color, and Kathy's gonna be happy with that one. Yep, you know, hunting up there with Canadian sub-Arctic hunting with Ken Gangler, I, I, we've traveled all over it, and I can honestly say we have never seen 
bears like that the before. bears are insane up there i wish we had a three four hour tv show where I mean, we just, could show you the footage of the bears and the reactions and, and everywhere i mean just for example what about all the bears right at camp yeah check this out well spence last night when we came back from hunting we had these bear tracks coming in and they went right to the cabins it was something yeah well what what size bear do you think that is it doesn't look like too big it, it, it's not too big it was in fact um it's just a, a, a young bear, is what we're guessing. Uh, last night, we actually, he had come back in. Right, you know, it was almost dark, and there's, he had pulled a barrel of grease, a bucket of grease over behind the cabins, and he's starting to root it up, starting to dig it all up now. And so that's one of the things up here with Ken Gangler up in Manitoba is that, I mean, we're out in the middle of nowhere, this and nowhere. this is one of the things that we have to deal with it. in camp. You need to be a little more careful, I guess, with where we're putting, like, the grease buckets and just even all, all our food and everything else. And, the guides here, Dean and Kip, they've got big, looks like um, nails, of, bed nails, <laughs> you know, up underneath all the windows to try keeping the bears out of the cabin. Yeah, but I've been, I've, when no one's looking, I've been taking that, uh, that bear scent and squirting about 20 yards from my window. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I, did. I, I don't took think a the bear. <laughs> I scented it and I really did put it there. Yeah? Yeah. It wasn't Tony a little farther away, but. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> They're trying to get away. I'm trying to come out with And <laughs> now we know why we have bear tracks here, <laughs> oh, Spence. <laughs> let's, let's go get going. <laughs> Did you really? I did. <laughs> oh no. And now for the time that we've all been waiting for. Again, no, we're not cutting Why it off. Why don't you go? It's my take turn. Take a break. Go to the fridge. And you don't no, need it. No, 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 no. We we <sighs> sat this bait site. We had a we had a sow in there all the time, but they kept telling us that there's a big bear in there. They just know it. I mean, we saw the sign. There's definitely a sign in there of big bears. Yeah, there's a lot of sign. Bait's not. 15 yards off the water, no. take a boat up there, and boom, it's there. We come to bait the one day. We didn't even have time to get set up. I mean, I jump off to tie the rope, and I look up, and there's the black bear on the, you know, at the site, and I realize the bear lifts his head and looks, Vic, it ain't that bear. It ain't that bear. <laughs> I mean, let's go. So, I mean, we scramble. We didn't get a, I mean, the mics. We, Vicky tried to take the shot from couldn't. She climbed up the stand. I stayed on the ground. I mean, you've got to see this to believe it. You know, one of the things here, up at Canadian Subarctic Hunting is that you've got almost daylight 24 hours a day, eh, maybe 20 hours out of the 24. The bears are active all day long. Right now, it's about quarter to 10, and we're gonna go out and sit on a stand. I know most bear hunts, you hunt in the evenings, and that's about it, but they've, they have bears coming in all the time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, go across the lake. I guess we have about a half hour ride in the boat, across the lake to where, we got, where they got another bait set up, and they, they said they saw chocolate around there, so we'll keep my fingers crossed. Maybe I can get one. Already. He's down already. He's down already. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Positive. Well, I just don't want. Oh my god. Good job. Good job. Good job. Oh my gosh. I'm almost, oh, <laughs> look at this, look at this beast. Oh my gosh, his, oh, he's got his canines. He's got no canine, look at this, it's gone. This other one's chipped off. Hi, buddy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> look at the size of this hog. <laughs> now this is hunt bear hunting at its best. 
I did it again. I did it again. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you know, folks, what do you think about that? I mean, I, I shot a great bear. Spence got a beautiful color. And, and well, I shot an awesome bear. <laughs> anybody could hit a big, old, slow-moving, giant-headed, bucket-head bear. I mean, that's, that's not exactly a challenge. That's exactly what he was. He I mean, was a just... big, bucket-headed bear. <sighs> hey, we want to thank Ken Gingler at Subarctic Adventures. And after the show, stay on because you can see all the information. And remember this. You know, in today's society, we are losing the battle when it comes to hunting. And one thing is the baiting issue. Check out your local and your national legislation. Be part of it, because if all of us stick together, we have this for all the kids in the future. Until next week. Same time. Same station. Right here on, on the, the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice.